It might be the international break, Newcastle fans. It might only be three Premier League games into the season, Newcastle fans. But it still gives us an opportunity, whilst we might be missing the football and trying to pretend we like England friendlies. Good morning, England! <laughs> to talk about what maybe we've learnt and what Eddie Howe has learnt three matches and one cup game into the season. So if you're curious, and I think you might be, do us a little favour, Newcastle fans, and make sure you stick around for a lovely little dollop. Around my band. <laughs> Welcome back to Rank White Banter, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, as you can see from where I am stood, I am outside St James's Park. It is absolutely lashing down. And the reason that I'm not standing with, with this on a stanchion, a tripod, as the cool kids call it, is because it's raining. So I've had to get a selfie stick out. So if this camera's wobbling a little bit, I apologise. If you're new around here on Newcastle fans, do us a little favour. Whack that little like, like, little button. Whack that subscribe. Get Black and White Banter across all socials. Dealing with Eddie House mags. Episode 2, Season 2, Tottenham Hotspur Edition, which is always normally a good one, is out, and the love for it has been absolutely amazing, so check that out. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about dealing with Eddie Howe's mags. I'm, I'm here to talk about what Eddie Howe's mags have maybe learned three games into the season. Now look, is this the earliest international break I can remember? But I'd have to dig the records out on that. It certainly feels like it's a little bit too early for everyone involved with the club. It's too early for me. We're just starting to get them wheels turning. And then we have to watch England against Ireland in some pointless Nation League game. But Eddie Howe's team is maybe welcomed by a break this early in the season. And that's going to lead me on to point number one on what I think we've learned so far after these three Premier League matches, two wins, one draw and a penalty shootout win against Nottingham Forest. Now look, whilst most Newcastle fans might be arguing that we have not started the season in the best way, in terms of style of play, domination of the football, chances created. There's a couple of concerns there, and we'll touch on them on this video. The one point that I would make, first and foremost, is that Eddie Howe's, new, Eddie Howe's Newcastle United, Eddie Howe's teams in his managerial career, do not start the season all guns blazing as a bit of a rule. I look back on the season we qualified for Champions League football, and we started the season pretty slow, until we went down to Fulham, and Almiron scored that, dare I say, lucky, random volley when we won 4-1, we hadn't even picked up a win, and that was in October. And even at Bournemouth, when I look a little bit further back, which I like to do, they always started the season a little bit more steadily, and they were always struggling, but then started to pick up wins. So why is that? Well, Eddie Howe's team is one of the most intense on a traditional style of play that he likes to play in the Premier League. And that's what makes St James's Park, this beautiful place I'm stood in, an absolute chokehold. But what comes with that, after an international tournament, is those players getting up to speed. And it does take a while. And some of the new players coming into the team, your Tanali who's come back from injury, um, your, your defenders that are coming back, Liveramento coming in after not playing that much football in pre last season for Eddie Howe. It's going to take time. But the difference with this one is, Newcastle United are actually winning football matches in this early phase. And that's quite unheard of for Eddie Howe to be seven points good from nine with a penalty shootout win in the bank against Premier League opposition in the Cup. It's not the worst start. And what I would say to any Newcastle fan, and it could be my famous last words, is there is a hell of a lot more to come. And the reason I think this is a good early international break is because if there is one manager on planet Earth who loves an international break, it is Eddie Howe. He's going to have them players running a bit harder, learning from the first three matches. Who's not looking, a bit, who's not looking up to speed? Bedding Sandro Tonali in. Bedding Livramento into playing on the right-hand side with Jacob Murphy a little bit more. Including Harvey Barnes in, in, in stages of play. All important things that this Newcastle team is going to take a little bit of getting used to, particularly Mr Sandro Tonali. So whilst, yes, there are concerns, what I would say to any Newcastle fan is stay patient with this group of players because this start, in terms of how Eddie Howe normally starts seasons with his style of play, is a pretty decent one and there is a foundation which is only going to get stronger and I fully stand by that. That's not my Eddie Howe happy clapping mentality, that is fact on how Eddie Howe's teams in his managerial career start seasons and that's a reason to be optimistic. Right, next one up for me. It's on every Newcastle fan's lips at the moment. Mr. Anthony Gordon. Running down the wing, Gordon. Makes the Geordie sing. Oh, Mags. Makes the Geordie sing, Gordon. We're all going to Madrid. It's in your head now, isn't it? No. 
see his, see his head on for a second. Anthony Gordon has not started the season very strongly. He wouldn't deny that. No Newcastle fan in the stands can deny that. Yes, he scored a crucial goal against Bournemouth. Yes, Eddie Howe is sticking with him, but we are not seeing the same Anthony Gordon that finished last season. Now, there were lots of question marks over that, but now I've watched his interview on England duty under Lee Carsley, his facial expressions, his mannerisms when he's answering the questions about the Euros and how disappointed he was, he's broken. And I still honestly think, and my perceptions have changed, if you would have asked me this a week ago about Anthony Gordon, I would have said, he's not the sort of player who's going to dwell on that. In pre-season against Girona, when we battered them at St James' Park, he looked electric. That's a load of bollocks. Eddie Howe's played a slightly more reserved style in these first couple of matches. That's all it is. Now that I've watched him talking openly, and he, he looks a very emotional character, Mr Gordon, it's affected him. He said that he went into the summer feeling like nobody could stop him. And suddenly Southgate stopped him. And that gets sucked out of you like literally like a, like a Dyson vacuum. And I think that's really, really mentally affected him because he felt going into that tournament that he could have lit up the Euros. And I've still got absolutely no doubts and I will go on record despite us getting to the final and saying that Gareth Southgate is an absolute wally putting it politely as I possibly can for not giving him more minutes. He was the most in-form English winger in the league. And he saw, what, two minutes when he created a chance? And he looked really bright in the injury time he came on. I think Anthony Gordon is going to take some patience. And as I record this, I watched him against the Republic of Ireland. Amazing to see him start. He should have scored for our first goal when he went clean through. He was making runs. He wanted the ball. It's only going to do his confidence good. Do I think it's slightly because Eddie Howe has set up in a slightly more reserved style against Tottenham, against Southampton, when we were never going to be on the front foot against, with 10 men for 60 minutes? Yes. But now that I've seen him in his most raw form on that interview for England duty, he's going to take a little bit of a while to get that spring back. Because if there is one thing that a footballer like Anthony Gordon needs in his belly, it's fire that he is one of the best players on that pitch when he has the ball at his feet. And I'm sorry to say it, at Gareth Southgate, no matter how many times he reads in the press that he should have played more, the fans were dying for him to be in the team. He's had it sucked out of him. He really, really has. And it's going to take a bit of time. And that's my honest opinion. Yes, there's been a transition. Eddie Howe's played him on the right-hand side, but we will get the real Anthony Gordon back. It's just going to take, I think mentally, not physically, because he didn't play any football in the summer. He was sat on that bench, dying to be on. He's, he's had a couple of games in pre-season. It's going to take a little bit of time. And that's the, the first thing that Eddie Enton Howe now has to deal with. And these England fixtures, I'm telling you, are going to be a godsend, because Lee Carsley... He might not be everyone's first choice to get the England job permanently, but he worked with him when, when Anthony Gordon won the player of the tournament as he lifted a trophy last summer for England's under-20s. So if there is one person to come into the England job who's going to have so much faith in the kid, it's Lee Carsley. And that is going to set us up, hopefully, for that return against Wolves. He's going to come back with that fire back in his belly. Now, the third point from me... Uh, Barnes will tear you apart again. That's right, I'm just, this is the video of chance. I'm starting every point with a chant. Mr. Harvey Barnes, look, £35 million. Great sign at the time. Some fans were on the fence about it. How does he make us better? Well, look at his goal record, I would say to anyone that, in his time at Leicester. Um, even in a struggling Leicester team at times, he scores goals. And that game against Tottenham, that finish should not be underestimated. If, a, if Alan Shearer side foots that with the ball on the bounce into the far corner everyone's saying it's a wonderful finish brilliant and that is what Harvey Barnes was signed for but what we are seeing now when I've had question marks whether Eddie Howe maybe shouldn't have spent 35 million pound on a substitute for, for Gordon on the left hand side we are maybe seeing um, a Harvey Barnes now who is, who is being embedded in his toy injury's done. He did finish the season strong last season who could forget that absolute screamer against Tottenham Harvey Barnes Oh, God. Mamma mia. That was a beautiful one. But what comes with Harvey Barnes playing on the left, and I've got no issue with Anthony Gordon learning that right-hand side. Play Harvey Barnes has not played there. I don't see a world where Harvey Barnes is going to be on the right too often. It's going to be Gordon who's going to be asked, but he can switch, and that's going to cause defenders headaches. But what comes with Harvey Barnes, in my opinion, I do not want to see him in one-on-one -on -one positions trying to take a man on. He does not have pace. Harvey Barnes always wants the ball on the last man. He wants the through ball. He wants someone to overlap him to open up space so he can have a shot. And we need to learn in transitions into attack how to play that way. Because yes, Barnes might free himself up on the left. And I'm not saying he can't do a job and run past a person. 
but he is not the same as Anthony Gordon and I think that's a positive but what Eddie Howe should be looking to work on in this international break if he's going to keep playing Barnes which I'm all for is how we get the best out of him how did Leicester get the best out of him in my opinion any Leicester fan would argue Harvey Barnes is going to play on the shoulder Harvey Barnes is suited to the counter attack which is a different conversation about how, how Eddie Howe might be setting up for a different video but we are already learning that Eddie Howe is going to maybe try and include him because he sees him and Gordon as his strongest two wingers in the squad and look I'm a Jacob Murphy fan on his day pace direct loves to whip the ball in I don't think Gordon's a great crosser of the ball. I don't think Harvey Barnes is a great crosser of the ball. Yes, someone might say he's balling for Gordon against Bournemouth. But I'm talking generally here. Um, Jacob Murphy can ping a ball in his day and he also likes to get the shot off. But those are our first two choice wingers. They will cause headaches for defenders as the season goes on if they keep switching left to right, left to right. But Harvey Barnes needs to be suited to a certain style of play. Because if we are constantly giving the ball to him on the left, I think as fans will become frustrated with him, but we have to remember that's not what Harvey Barnes is about. But he might tear you apart again. Do, do. Hey, come on, it's your turn. Sandro, ole, 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 midfield maestro from Milano. Sandro, ole, ole, ole. So I just had to get Maggie involved. She's feeling a bit left out of this video. She's got lots of opinions, but she's just not able to get them on. The selfie stick doesn't go that low. Had to come down to her level. All about inclusion on these videos. Yeah, Sandro Tonali. Wow. That Forest first 45 minutes. Mother of mercy. Not only was that a great away end, by the way, but I was absolutely creaming my knickers to the point where, luckily, I did think Sandro was coming back in. I did pay, bring a pair, spare pair of Calvins. So that saved us. Against Tottenham, not so much. And what I noticed with Eddie Howe was playing him a little bit higher. He's a, he, he's a player who can cover every blade of grass, but I still don't think that's where he's going to be suited to. He's going to be deeper. And that brings me on to a massive point here. I really hope him, Bruno, and Joe Linton can play as a three. Now, my really controversial Newcastle opinion, some might agree with me, some might absolutely batter me in the comments. Feel free. I love getting battered in the comments. Not in a dirty way, though. Um, is that Tonali, when he is fully fit, is a better footballer than Bruno. And yes, people, are, we love Bruno. His emotional connection is something Sandro Tonali will never have. He's pretty much an adopted Geordie, uh, Bruno. He's just great character. But, I mean, again, as I record this, that assist against France for Italy, he played a full 90 minutes against one of the best teams in the world. Full 90 minutes after being out for 10 months. And that lovely little dink. I think you just got, was quite good to get that in. Mr. Flexible here. Beautiful. I've literally lit scented candles and watched that back about 30 times. This is the sort of midfield that we are getting Newcastle fans. 90 minutes in the tank in 3-1 win against France. Just pulling out assists for fun. He is a brilliant footballer. But now, and I'm sure Eddie Howe's been planning for it all summer, is that midfield three going to work? Does it offer us uh, enough differences if, from defence to attack? I am still not sure. Joe Linton, for me, is going to have a lot more emphasis on him to be that guy to support Barnes, to support the front three. Can Joe Linton be that guy, or is Joe Linton more suited to be in the defensive shithouse we know he can be, who covers all of that ground in and around the box? That's why Joe Willock is one of the most underrated midfielders for me in this team, if he can just stay fit. How do we bed Sandro Tonali in is the first thing. I think from looking at him early, he, he wants to play that pass. He wants to get that through ball. It is a simple stroke of the football as soon as he gets it. It doesn't have to take a second thought about it. And against Forrest, he was doing it for fun. So we are going to get someone who moves the football. We are going to get someone who's going to move with the attack. Whether we get someone who's going to dynamically support Isaac, Gordon, Barnes, I'm not so sure. Because Tonali will support it and get into the box and get a shot off. We saw it against Villa last season. But I'm just not sure whether he's that person. Um, we are getting a guy who's going to start the attack. He's going to mop up their attacks in terms of the opposition I just don't know whether that midfield three could prove to be too much the same of the same and I'm sure Eddie Howe's worked on this but my god isn't it exciting final point from me because there's so many things we can say we've learned from the first three matches but what I've learned final one is in a defensive manner not only have we been more resolute that's a different video for a different day um, so please whack that subscribe and you might see those different videos for different days it's Tino Livermento now, I've got a bet on a £50 bet with a friend that Tino Livermento is going to be starting for England at the next World Cup because I have so much faith that he is one of the best athletic, naturally gifted defenders from a defensive point of view for a very, very, very long time. Very, very long time. 
But what I'm noticing in this Newcastle team is that Eddie Howe is going to start Livermento. Trippier, he might rotate, but Livermento has not offered as much going forward as maybe what we'd hoped. And that's going to be a slow transition. He's not going to whip the ball in. He's not going to get to the byline. He wants to come inside and roam into the box. That's great. That offers us something different. That drags defenders away where Mr Gordon on the right-hand side could play into his hands. And that will work quite well for us. But we need to learn how Gordon and how Livermento can work together because this Newcastle team needs options from attack and fullback areas. And Lewis Hall, when he hasn't been in the team, we've lacked. Lloyd Kelly, he's not going to be that guy on the left-hand side. Dan Byrne on that side, not going to be... You know, I'd like to hope we're not going to see Dan Byrne at left-back anymore, but you get my point. Livermento has not offered much going forward. He's just been absolutely sound as houses defensively. I would go as far as say to defensively, Livermento is much better than Trippier. Decision-making, pace, deciding when to tackle those key moments. And he seems to be more suited to a frantic game. When the Tottenham match got frantic, I thought Livermento looked excellent. Absolutely impeccable. But we need to see more of him at the other end of the pitch. And when he came on against Nottingham Forest in the Cup, he offered that. So that's something that's going to take time. Newcastle fans, those are my five. Five did I go through there? Key, key talking points from this little international break in the pissing down rain with the dog having a little stroll with us that, that have been racking my brain. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about Sandro? What do you think about uh, Harvey Barnes? Is he going to be a starter for us or do you think Eddie Howe's just testing him? Um, let me know everything down below. And please, can I just say the love for my channel more recently has been great. Whether it's dealing with Eddie Howe's mags, whether it's been people making donations, which is so unexpected. I'm a fan first and I like to make these videos second. So please, if I've spoke to you in an away day or you've left any sort of comment on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, just, I just want to let you know I absolutely love you to pieces. <laughs> soppy, soppy, bollocks. Uh, I do. No, I do. Honestly, the comments are absolutely class. There'll be more videos to come up in it. I take a breath during this international break, which is why I'm back outside my favourite place. So drop down there, give us that little like you like you do. What that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. And as always, I'll oh, get you in for this one. How are you? Eddie Howe's dog walking mag. Yeah.